I want to talk a few minutes today about Job. And I want us to think about how he suffered to compare to what we have suffered and may suffer. This is found in the book of Job, King James Version Bible. I'm going to start in chapter 1 with verse 1. And there's a lot in this that we need to read and look into and see where we stand. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you one more time for another time you have given us to get in your word and read a few words in your scripture. And I pray, O oh Lord, you reach down today and know it, our lips of clay, that we may speak with understanding. And I pray you anoint to hear the well, those that read the, hear this, and anoint their ears, and anoint their heart, and give them understanding how we all must apply the word to ourselves, and myself included, that we may know how to walk and please you. Lord, we ask these things. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now listen how he begins to read. And he reads, There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and ensued evil. The word perfect here, he had, he had matured in the gospel. He had matured with the Lord. And he feared God. He recognized the power of God. And he knew what God could do. Therefore, he hated evil. He turned away from the evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels and five hundred yoke of oxen. Now a yoke would have been two. Five hundred yoke of oxen and five hundred she, she donkeys and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. God had blessed him with plenty as much as he would ever need in his lifetime. But now let's go on just a little farther. And his sons went and fasted, feasted in their houses, every one his day, on every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. In other words, they would they would gather and have parties, have a feast. This time they called the three sisters to come and feast with them. But what I want you to notice, what Job did concerning this. And this tells us how upright Job was in trying to walk and pleasing the Lord. Verse, verse 5. And it was so, in other words, it happened, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. And Job said, 
it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. He continually continued or continually offered up sacrifices on the behalf of his children if he even thought they may have committed sin. They offered up those sacrifices. Then we offer up prayers today because the animal, animal sacrifices were taken out of the way when Jesus gave himself on the cross. He became the sacrifice for the whole world and all the sins that man might commit. Verse 6, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Notice this. When they gathered together, to present themselves to the Lord, Satan came also among them. Everywhere God's children are gathered, Satan is going to be there. <coughs> Excuse me for that. But there ain't no way we can run and escape our troubles and trials. But we can go to Jesus. We can talk it all over with Him. He will hear our humble heart. And He will bless us to be able to walk away from that sin and things that would destroy us. Now let me go on this a little farther. But let me say this. If Satan will come against them, beware, he will come against us. Verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? The word you come from. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that fears God and entreweth evil, one that dislikes evil, like the one is, he follows me. The Lord was telling Satan that Job followed him. And he told, he told Satan, said there's no one like him. But now listen, if the Satan said this to the Lord himself and knew who he was, What is he going to do to us? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for naught or for nothing? Hast thou not made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath? On every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hand. And his substance is incre increased in the land. Even Satan told the Lord. <coughs> that the Lord had blessed Job to have all these things. There are people today. Will get ill-gotten gain 
they don't care who they hurt to get it. But they were allowed to obtain it in order to help those that are less fortunate than, than they are. But to keep it to themselves and hold it to themselves and don't care for the fellow man. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he had and he will curse thee to thy face. The devil didn't know how wrong he was concerning God and concerning God's servant Job. Because he told the Lord that Job would curse him to his face. But how wrong he was, he was to think these things about the Lord, about to his servant Job that served him to the best of his ability. And if we'll serve him the best of our ability, we also will be blessed because he blesses those that love him. Even though we may not see it, he still blesses us every day of our life. He provides a place for our head at night. He, per he blesses us with shoes for go on our feet and clothes on our back and food on the table, although it ain't the best. It will sustain us. And keep us. But more than that. He saved our soul one day. When we accepted him. As our Lord and Savior. And, re and repented of our evil doings. And asked him to forgive us. And come into our hearts. And take up his abode with us. He forgave us. And he came into our hearts. To live with us. Even though. We had been such a sinner. As we were. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, it's again we come to you to thank you for these words. Lord, I know this is a short video, but I ask you to bless each word that's been spoken, and each word that's been said, and if you will help me continue this chapter in another time. But I can talk without coughing. But most of all, I know you are in arrangement. I know you led me to this scripture. I know you let me speak it. And again, I ask you to anoint the hearts of the listeners. And Lord, if there's any sick, I pray you reach down and touch, heal, deliver, and set free. And help us all grow closer to you. That we may serve you more today than we did yesterday because we have no promise of tomorrow because tomorrow may never come but we have a promise of eternal life if we are anchored and secure in you and have been born again so i pray one more time you help us to rejoice in you and be glad and give you the praise today on and forevermore and we won't be forgetful to forget you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, Father, one more time for your love and your mercy.